welcome to the third episode of Next Up, where we've been talking about the four C's behind the business of child nutrition. What was last episode about, Marlon? I was hoping you were going to say that because I forgot. It was about culture. I was testing you, and I love culture and creating a collaborative culture. But this episode, we're talking about communication. This is something I think that all of us could learn a little bit more about because whether it's about you know, communicating with our peers, communicating with external folks, um, it really goes, I, I think there's, there isn't no bounds. I think we can always learn more about this. You can. Do you remember the first time we actually communicated? Because Roy made a comment about actually picking up the phone and calling people. And do you remember the first time you called me? Because you called me first. Oh, that's right, because you, you answered the phone and you said, hi, Nisha. And it was super awkward, but you know what? From that very moment, we built a relationship and we collaborated together, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about today is communicating. And another good point that Roy made today was he was talking about actually being on camera when you're on a Zoom. And that's something that you could um, work on yourself, right? Absolutely. I think we all could work on that. <laughs> I think so, too. And she's probably going to strangle me after this episode, but hey. Let's go ahead and dive right in, right? Absolutely, I can't wait to learn more. Hope you guys enjoy. Hey, I am so glad to be back together with you guys. And I just have to say, Roy, I'm gonna sing this for you. <laughs> Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver <laughs> and the other's <laughs> gold. <laughs> so back with friends here at our next up um, episode for, on communication. Mm. Let's talk about communication today. And we know that it's the key to success in any organization and how we communicate and platforms we communicate on and you know social media. And, and where are we gonna take this today, guys? Let's talk about communication. Who's up? Man, I feel like for an organization, sometimes we can't communicate clearly enough to one another, or we over communicate and people don't read the full email, sure. right? So focusing <laughs> per on- my earlier email. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guilty, guilty. So how do we make Im impactful communication and, sure. hear, and hear people listen to us, right? Whether it be within our organization or our our community and finding the next thing. I feel like social media is kind of phased out a little bit because we're marketed to constantly <laughs> on sure. social media, so it's easy to keep scrolling. But what, so what's the next place? Where are the kids looking? Where are parents looking, right? Where are we getting our information from? And how do we keep it interesting and fresh and drag that customer in right mm -hmm. off the bat? Perfect. I think that's the most difficult part about communication is figuring out who you're communicating to, mm -hmm. right? Because I find my kids are going to be much more responsive to communication coming out from, you know, an IG or a TikTok. But my parents are going to want to see Facebook or, or I even have people who actually want that snail mail letter, right? They want that paper in hand. So how do we figure out what is the best way to communicate? our message to either our teachers, to our families, to our community? Does it mean getting in front of the cameras? and calling in your local news media and being like, this is how I need to communicate to get them my biggest bang for my buck. And how do I communicate to my students? You know, one of the lessons we learned way early in, in terms of marketing with students was they don't stop the read posters. Like it's great when vendors give us these beautiful posters and they spend so much time with these pop-up stands and table tents and the kids are like, Shh. what they respond to is something, say something different, right? So. If, my um, lunchroom crew is wearing like a different colored t-shirt or they have a hat on or apron on. They're like, what are you wearing? And so it's that kind of communication too, not always verbal or written. Mm -hmm. It's the body language and the pop that people see. Yeah. Body language is important. We try and teach that to our managers, okay? You set the tone for the day. You don't have to mm -hmm. say a word. Do you have a smile on your face when your staff comes in? You're going to set that tone. You are the leader. You didn't have to say a word, but that's a different form of communication. I always go back to the internal, okay? Mm. What I talk about with our district and how important communication is amongst your different departments, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Knowing how they can help you. Because I can tell you right now, and I probably could speak for you all too, if you had no food to feed kids, everybody's coming to the forefront. Oh, yes. Don't worry about educating. Okay, <laughs> these kids are hungry, figure it out, mm -hmm. okay? So that communication internally is big, whether it's with your managers, whether it's with another department. 
communicate with your school board, mm -hmm. okay? They have to know, they can be your biggest cheerleaders, okay, if they mm -hmm. know what's going on in your department and the challenges, because they will come to your defense if there happens to be some negative press that's out there, sure. they will come. Oh, let me help educate you on what they are doing there and all the good things they're doing for our kids. Because they know, because you communicated it. Absolutely, yeah. mm -hmm. absolutely. 100%. Mm -hmm. When I was a kitchen manager, um, I remember when I first started, uh, my staff that I came into, I had you know, 14 different uh, employees working with me and they were like, oh, the, the, the administration doesn't listen to us. You know, it's them and us. And I was like, excuse me? What, what, what does that mean? I'm like, no, 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 no. So I started going to PTO meetings and those kinds of things. Um, I started going to all staff meetings. I went down to the principal secretary and I said, you know, am I allowed to attend this staff meeting? I didn't get the invite. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry. I can send you on the invite if you want to come. Usually our lunch staff, you know, is gone by two o'clock. And I'm like, no, no, no. Because all of this stuff that's going on, these parties and these field trips and stuff, like that affects me. Like, I want to know. So as a kitchen manager, I invited myself to a seat at the table, right? So I think a lot of times the communication is on our responsibility to go after it and get it. Right, it's not just put onto the leadership team to give that communication because it's not intentional. Jess, we were talking about, Jessica, we were yeah. talking about this the other day um, when we were chatting about how communication isn't always the leader's responsibility or you know, whoever's, they, they didn't mean to leave us mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. We're essential. They do not mean to leave us off, but we've got to take as school nutrition advocates we have to get a seat at the table. Yeah. You know, I know you do a lot with LAC and lobbying and that kind of stuff. You know, you've got to fight for that voice sometimes. Mm -hmm. Communications both ways, right? Like how do we as directors and, and managers and stuff empower our people to go, how are you communicating? Like, how are you getting yourself a seat at that table? Because school nutrition is critical. We give them scenarios. If this would occur, how will you communicate your message out? And yeah. we expect our managers to tell us, are you gonna put it in a written form, okay? Are you gonna do what we have instant message on our computers? Are you gonna pick up the phone? Are you actually gonna walk down to the front office and tell them based on the scenario, now, I've told you all, I'm old school. I still believe in that gold. phone. Go, you go. And oh, not <laughs> no. just text me. Like, what? Not the phone necessarily to text with, but the phone to hear a voice on the other end. I can pick up the phone at any time, call any one of my principals. If they're not available, they will return my call because I need answers then. Yeah. You're emailing, you could be one of 300 mm -hmm. and you're on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. By the time they get to it, the problem hasn't been solved mm -hmm. and it got even worse. Yeah. I want to be able to talk to somebody and that's that relationship building mm -hmm. that I'm big on. Building these relationships within your own district, you can solve a lot of problems that way. And sometimes it's the tone that you need them to hear, right? Yeah. If you yeah. said it in an email, the tone would seem a little, uh, but if you just have a, com a conversation on the phone, sometimes it's, yeah, it's the best way to do it. Sometimes it's just pick up that phone. Absolutely. And I love how you talked about relationship building because it's been really essential this year with the supply oh, yeah. chain issues. Because all of a sudden, I might have one school that doesn't get the same delivery as all the other 67 schools. So then the principal's like, well, why didn't my school get this? And that ability to, be, to have the managers be empowered and understand that they have that ability to communicate directly with the principal and have that relationship established so they can go down and say, hey, it just happened this way, it's supply chain, we're gonna take care of those kids, don't you worry. Those kids are still gonna have an absolute delicious, awesome meal today. That communicating again, our staff, all of them have been through so much mm. during this pandemic. Sure. How would you take this if it was somebody's birthday? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I keep track of every one of my manager's birthdays. Mm. If I'm just gonna shoot them an e email, happy birthday, does that have the same effect as me picking up the phone in the morning and I sing happy birthday yeah. to them? Yeah. I Jan sing off key, okay? Just so you know, okay. January 13th, I expect to Wait, wait, where's okay. my notebook? <laughs> Everybody write idea. that down. Yeah, yeah. But that is the difference maker yeah. when they hear it. Wow, they took time out of the day to pick up the phone mm -hmm. and wish me a happy birthday or, hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. I understand you were sick last week. You feel any better or anything we can do for you? That's the difference maker in that voice that you said, hearing it, you got that kind caring. You care, we mm -hmm. all care about our staff, but they need to hear it sometimes mm -hmm. and not necessarily in an emoji 
or a text <laughs> or whatever the case may be or an exclamation point are you yelling at me I'm not yelling at you right, right. Yeah. I you mean know, this is it I keep a pile of cards all different types of mm -hmm. cards in my office and sometimes I don't just send it to the kitchen I send it to their house because we talk mm -hmm. about things at work and celebrate at work but their family usually doesn't know that you know they did something awesome mm. right so when you send it home Right, they can just celebrate with their family in a different, more meaningful way. Sometimes. I love that idea. I'm going to take that away. Yeah. Send it at home mm -hmm. instead of at their kitchen there. So awesome idea. No, that's awesome. So when when we talk about internal communications and within our departments, and I love that you were talking about everybody's got a different form of communications. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a huge texter. I love to text. Like it's my thing long before <laughs> COVID or anything like that. And you know, my staff will be like, how do you, and we, we, as we establish new people coming in, we talk about that. What is your first level of communication? How would you like to communicate second and third? And how would you like that? And a lot of people do say, first thing would be a phone call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's even deeper than that. One of the things we did in our department was actually do something called a disc analysis. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Where it yeah, actually so figures out mm -hmm. how you communicate. What is your style? It's everybody's very different. So, um, you know, in full disclosure, I'm one of those people who, when my staff come in and talk to me, I just want them to cut to the chase. Tell me what you need, let's get it done. But there's other people on my team who need to be like, hey, how was your day? How was last night? What's going on? You know, how was your drive in? <laughs> and by the way, can we talk about this issue? Like they need that extra time, that extra lead in. And we actually have in our, in our department, every, on, instead of a name plate, we have a disc plate. And it tells what that person's way of communicating mm. is. So when you walk into their office, you know, okay, this is how I need to communicate with this person. This is how their, their, their love language of communication is. And it has really been a much more effective way to communicate with each other when we understand and respect that we're not all the same and how we appreciate communication. Yeah, and I love that you talked about love languages, Jessica, because, I mean, first of all, I love. But we did one. It's uh, appreciation. La, the oh. languages of appreciation mm -hmm. at work. Yeah. It's the same kind of book. We did the same. The we love did language, too. Of, yeah. the appreciations at work. And it is a matter of, you know, communication is so much. You said it's more than just verbal. It's more than just written. It's physical. And, like, how you're taking that time to communicate. Do they matter? Do people, you know, the intentionality behind spending the time to talk to somebody. I, I remember when I first became a director, every single one of my one-on-one -on -one meetings would go over. I had them scheduled for an hour with the people I directly supervised as, and they would go over. And then, so the next person that had their one-on-one -on -one was you know running 15 minutes late and it would go over. And I thought, well, they just understand. Uh, no, they were interpreting that I was not valuing their time and so I had to be very conscious to the fact that I would schedule it an hour and not schedule the next one until 30 minutes after that hour because you know you want to be conscious of people's time but because I love to communicate and when people are talking to me about you know in those one-on-ones I let it be driven by the person I'm talking to mm -hmm. let me ask you all a question we all use zoom okay and for, for everything what's going on with the pandemic sure how do you feel when you don't get to see that person oh it drives me screen? crazy oh camera i'm like off. come on your screen is working <laughs> that's that point i'm trying to bring out you want to see the face yeah. okay uh, yeah. you want to make sure they're attentive to yeah. your needs and we're talking granted some people they don't know how to mute their mic at times okay and you have to educate <laughs> that because you hear everything them. else in the background <laughs> yeah but then you gotta hey that is the big thing so that uh, call that I host, I make sure I got to see your face. I yeah. want to see everybody's face. If you won't be on this call, okay, go from there. You want to text after this call, go do what you want to do. But at that time, mm -hmm. I want to see people's reaction, okay? Yeah. If they are stressed, what can we do to try and help? Yeah. I'm not going to see that with the camera off. Yes. Correct. Okay? Nonverbal no, communication. Absolutely. Right? You want to see the shock and awe on their face absolutely. if you say something. Yeah. And that's been a real struggle because of COVID. We can't have those big team huddle meetings and, and you know, when you used right. to have in your, in your center of your department. And so we have something called Dots and Donuts every Wednesday where everybody in the office gets together and we're on a call. We're on a, a Google Meet call and we expect cameras on. And we go through like, what's the temperature in the room? How's everybody doing? You know, um, what are the kudos that we want to shout out and what's going really well and, and how can we help problem solve together? Um, and we used to bring donuts in every Wednesday when we before COVID and we're getting back into that. But, but it's a really important way of just kind of connecting 
connecting the dots of each other and having that camera on is absolutely essential. That relationship building we're yes. talking about. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. So I think also with communication, if we talk about it, listening. I'm gonna be completely forthcoming. A huge part of communication is really being an incredible listener and listening to what people have to say and, and giving people um, that understanding. And that comes with leaving your camera on, not being distracted during those Zoom cons. I found myself trying to multitask, which I suck at, <laughs> but trying to multitask during different meetings and stuff like that. And my um, listening and paying attention actually probably got a little worse at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and then I realized I'm not fully vested. And so when you're communicating with people, it's really a skill set as a leader to be an incredible listener. Yeah. Sometimes we have a tendency, and I'm guilty of it, we'll ramble. You're on a topic and you just keep, okay. So keeping your meetings or your get-togethers with people mm -hmm. timed, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm big on a meeting should not last more than an hour. And I would say, okay, we got two minutes, kind of like we're being timed here <laughs> in our segment, okay? We need to wrap it up, okay? Because you will lose people, mm. okay? But you'll get them all coming back if they know you're very strict with the time, yep. okay? You're able to call yep. on everybody and they know what the rules are so they can get their message across in that short amount of time. Anything past that, you lose people and then you lose that form of communication. And agendas. Agendas. agendas and I have track. learned to do time yep. frames even like you said mm -hmm. with the agendas like how long are you giving people and and that kind of stuff so that they get that communication on what the meeting is going to be about before the meeting even starts yeah. that's huge it, and I want to go back because it's not just about listening in my opinion it's about really hearing them mm -hmm. and not only hearing them but letting them know that they've been heard yeah really validating that they took the time to come talk to you and that you really understood and respected that they took that time to communicate with you and you're going to communicate back. I think one of the things that um, I've learned from other uh, directors who didn't step up as well throughout my district was when they say, I have an open door policy. <laughs> But your door is closed now. Right. right. It's, yeah. Because we're on Zoom uh, meetings. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. But the open door policy has become more of a cliche than it yeah. has an actual, yes. sure. you yes. know, impactful sure. meaning, meaning um, for you to relationship build. Yeah. And so I think it's one of those things where when I have actually kind of limited, like I don't just say, I have an open door. Come talk to me when you want to. I say, hey, guys, here's when I'm available. Yeah. I am mm -hmm. here focused. My calendar is clear for this time for you to come and let's really talk. Yeah, I, I was on a, uh, I don't know, one call, and I stole this idea from a director, and she had a bigger district. I can't remember her name right now. I apologize. It's fleeting me. But she has a weekly call where she opens it up to everybody in her whole district to mm -hmm. call in and have a Zoom call with her, like everybody. And I was watching it on this webinar that she was on, and at first I was like, okay, she's got to have a small district, right? Like maybe 50, 60 employees. No. This woman had like 500, wow. 500 in her. So I was like, oh my, because I put in the chat. I was like, hey, how many do you have? And she said she opened it up. So I do a thing that's called dynamic discussions with the director every oh. Friday morning at 6.30 in the morning because that's when the managers are getting in. And some of the kitchen managers are so cute. They'll put it on Zoom and you see them running all over around their kitchen talking and they don't want to miss. And really we have about uh, anywhere from 20-ish people who come in, but it's open to all employees. And it gives them, you know, a chance to have access to me every Friday morning from 6.15 to 7 o'clock. That voice. That yeah. Voice, yeah, 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 yeah. Voice. That relationship right. building. I stole it. What did you call it? Replete and replicate or something you said in oh, another episode? Oh, R&D. Rip off and duplicate. Yeah, that's, I stole it. I stole it 100% from another director. I think sometimes it's up to us to bring out people to communicate because they're afraid. Yeah, 100%. Okay? Yeah. So calling on somebody, if you get somebody on your Zoom call, call them out. Not to put them on the spot, mm -hmm. but hey, good to see you. Thanks for being on the call. And when you go around, hey, I'd like to hear your opinion. Do you have mm -hmm. an opinion on mm -hmm. this? If they don't, you move on. But they know they're yeah. there, okay? And that's just part of this group and everybody else is going to ramble and my voice is never heard. So sometimes you need to pull people in to your group there and help them to communicate. Well, and that goes back to our last episode about culture, right? You, they don't feel picked on when you've developed a culture that everybody's voice matters, right? So when you're calling on them, if you were to call on me and I was your kitchen manager, I wouldn't feel that Roy was picking on me. I would feel like I matter 
because of that culture that you have, yeah. right? Yeah. And and you there you're gonna have people who just don't aren't necessarily like all of us on the stage where we want to openly share, and you do have to kind of reach in and, and grab them and pull them out. I remember when Katie first started coming to meetings in Colorado, and I was like pulling her in. <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, her I'm, voice matters. 100%. I'm much quieter and I sit in the back and I listen. I'm a listener, right? And I'll respond and I'll give my comments when I feel like it's important or I have something impactful to say. But I am more of a quiet behind the scenes, just watching what's going on person, for sure. Good but so good dynamic. Listener. Oh, good yeah. Listener. That's right. yeah. Yeah. And I've had to learn to be a better listener in my communication. And then a lot of times in communication, we think we know. Right with our experience, we sit down and we somebody starts talking to us, and they, and all of a sudden, all of the experiences that we have or what we've experienced comes forefront. We think we know. It's like no, no, no. I need to stop. That is not what's going on here. I don't know what's really happening, and I need to be fully present and understand. What's that saying? We don't know what we don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I think when it comes to communication. Um, in your department, in your leadership, if you could say one thing to a director, a fellow manager, or something, what would you tell them was the number one takeaway that you feel has helped you with successful communication in your career? I would say get to know something about each one of your employees or the people you interact with uh, that's not necessarily work-related but maybe personal, like I have a manager who just had her first grandbaby, so when I see her, I can ask her, hey, how's that grandbaby, did you get a new picture? Because I know she gets a picture every day uh, from her daughter, so I can connect with her that way before, you know, we talk about something else or I'm there for a reason, right? We can connect in a way that she trusts me, like to know a personal thing about her, but that we also are, you know, friendly with one another as well and that you shouldn't be afraid of me we should be collaborating working together nice yeah I really think it's important to be authentic to really be you um, I, I genuinely believe people can tell when you're putting on fronts <laughs> and trying to be something you're not and you know if, if that's the case and they're not going to take the information that I'm trying to share with them seriously that relationship is not going to be built right um, if I'm expecting them to be honest with me, then I need to give them that same respect back to them and be authentic and say, wow, you know what? You're right, I dropped that ball. And not be defensive and really listen and be open. I love what you just mentioned, being authentic. Uh, as an Italian, we can get very emotional at times, mm. okay? And uh, I was the president of the School Nutrition Association for Florida about two years ago. And in my final speech, I was talking about people that served on my team there and I just could not help mm. to compose myself. Now, was that the most professional thing to do when you're up there, because people want to hear, but they saw how authentic it was mm. because it, it was from the heart. 100%. So I go back to that, what has served me well in my years in school nutrition is the relationship building. I don't care what department, we're all there for a purpose of our kids. Our maintenance guys are the most important thing in my eyes. My food service staff is the most important thing in my eyes. My principals are the most important thing in my eyes because I understand the challenges they go through sure. and it's up to me to build that relationship so they know what we're going through. Yep. Our teachers, everybody, getting to know their role and how we all mesh together and create success in our school districts. And I think it's important to know it's not easy. Right. Oh, no. I think I think we need to give ourselves a little bit of grace here that it takes time. It takes mm -hmm. work to make those relationships. It takes the time to learn how to communicate mm -hmm. and, and how to be effective in that. So giving yourselves a little bit of grace that you're that as long as you're moving forward in your progress, mm -hmm. you're going to get there. And I, and I think the biggest thing that I want to just say is we have a voice. And first of all, I just want to say next up has given us a communication platform. And so we're, I'm very appreciative to them. And one of the things in my leadership journey is when you're brave enough to be yourself, when you're brave enough, Roy, to stand on Florida's stage as the president and be authentically and truly who you are and show that emotion, you gave everybody in that room the courage to do the same. And I wanna say thank you to you leaders. I'm excited for our next episode that's gonna be live. Looking forward uh, to it. But I just want to say to the leaders and to you guys, when we're brave enough 
to communicate and be authentically ourselves, we give other pe people and permission to do the same. And I would encourage everybody to do that. So looking forward to our last episode and we'll see you guys in a few months. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Thanks everybody. Nisha, what did you think about that episode? And let me tell you, I learned so much. I think, you know, I think we, I was just like I was talking about, there's so much just internally with our teams that we could help fix, right? I loved the fact that, you know, it was Shannon and Jessica that were just talking about how everybody communicates differently and we have to take that time to get to know everybody on an individual level. We can't mm -hmm. assume that everybody across the board can, you know, interpret information in the same way. So how long did it take for you to understand how to communicate with me? I'm still learning. <laughs> I don't think anybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say you want to communicate um, all the wisdom that was shared on stage today with other food service directors and professionals out there. How would you do that? How are you doing that? Wonderful question. Um, so Blink is sponsoring a business guide. You can actually download it right down here. If you click on this link, we will ha actually have the full edition out in sometime in July. I believe there's going to be a special oh. in person episode in person like live in person i believe so marlon that would be really cool so you guys are going to have to stay tuned for that and that's going to be the fourth episode of the four c's behind the business of child nutrition we'll see you there <laughs>